we're back for another video, as is usually the intro. This time we're working on my bed head control. This sits on my bed head, has a couple of 5 volt regulators to charge things, and we've got my overhead lights work on here. We even have a fuse that lights up a light to tell us that the fuse is blown. Um, however, I normally have a wireless charger that sits on the top of this, and the regulator on this side recently burnt out. Not entirely sure why, I think we might have plugged a faulty cable in. Anyway, today we're going to replace this right hand regulator here. So uh, let's get this front panel off and see how we go. Now, this is a design that I came up with on my laser cutter probably a couple of years ago now, I don't remember exactly. The build video is in my ancient videos somewhere, um, and I don't even recall what I called it. So uh, yeah. And I went a little bit overboard with the screws by the look of it. There are brass threaded inserts behind this that are pressed into the timber. Um, with a view to making this repairable. But uh, it takes a little bit to get all these screws out. So once we've got them out, we'll show you the front coming off. Alright, these screws are out. So now we can extract the front panel. In here are a couple of regulators. Now, it's interesting, this is still connected to my 12 volt system, uh, which is off a solar system, and uh, somewhere along the lines with one of the uh, UPSs I've plugged in, it shares a ground with the mains. So, when I use my soldering iron on this, I'm gonna have to pull this fuse out um, to disconnect that hot wire. Anyway, uh, one of these has failed. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Let me find my USB tester. So we should have, we'll put our fuse back in for a moment. Yep. Just a couple of turns here. We'll plug this guy in. I think that's gonna be, have to go in upside down. All right, so we have five volts there. We have nothing on that side. So that is definitely the one we wanna pull off. So we need to locate that one, which will be this lead here which connects to that regulator right there. So that is the one we're going to remove. So let's find the hot wire here and chop that. Okay, now we're gonna pull the fuse out and uh, we'll get round to ripping everything else out. One of the main reasons I went down the path of using these regulators is they have nice little threaded um, little shrouds and plugs on them. So I can screw this directly into the panel without any real modification or gluing. So it makes exactly what I'm doing here uh, quite easy. Here goes one. So we'll rip that out and we'll do the other side and we'll show you the next bit. All right, that's our old one removed. And uh, these ports are likely still good. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop these guys. This is resin filled. Not worth the effort. I tried opening one of these up and I st about two, nearly three years ago and I still have it in the jar over the back pending that video, so um, that may never happen. <laughs> anyway, I've got these two spares for later. I will use them for something else. Here's our new regulator. I'm going to start moving this video on, along just a little bit quicker because I've just been notified the day is getting on and I still have to pick up my apprentice from the bus stop. So, you get the, gen the general idea. We're gonna insert two of these on here, and uh, I might, mm, I've done the other two that way up. Generally, I'll flip one of these that way up, so I don't have to worry about which way I'm putting a port in. But anyway, we'll get this uh, installed, and we'll be back. And that is my uh, reminder, so let's hurry up. All right, so we have our uh, connectors screwed into the front plate. Um, we've just gotta hook up power. So these are pre-tinned. Hopefully my uh, good old Weller iron is uh, hot and running. Otherwise I have my Chinese one as a backup. Um, let's see, do we have a hot iron? We do. All right, our fuse is out. Let's get soldering. All right, good old blue tack to the rescue. I'm gonna do something a smidgen dodgy here and I'm gonna solder straight to the back of that fuse holder where all the other wires are coming from. I should probably also be running my fume extraction fan right now. 
so I'm not breathing in lead fumes because this is 6040 tin lead solder. So there's our hot wire in. Now I conveniently, when I chopped the negative wire off this one, I left a small tail. Although it is a little tangled, it will facilitate reconnecting this uh, much better. And I'll whack a little bit of heat shrink over that. Although, because this is in an enclosed box, you know what, I'm going to get lazy and I'm going to whack just a little bit of tape on it. Um, because this is a personal build, not a professional build. And uh, I know I have fuses on everything. All right. And we're not even going to do an inline splice. That's going to bug some people, I am absolutely sure. But you know what? We might, we might hybridize this. That will allow us to add a little bit of heat shrink after the fact. So let's do that. All right, we've got a bit of heat shrink to go on over these. Let's shove you there. Reattach the blue tack that stopped the cables dragging everything off the bench. And we will give this a gentle bit of heat. And while that heat shrink is still hot, we're going to give it a squeeze. And that way, nothing falls down the end. All right, let's pack it all back in the box. All right, we're nearly there. We're going to uh, plug in a voltmeter and check that everything still works. Let's adjust our camera angle up because we are constrained by the length of the cable. So we've got nothing on it at the moment. Should see something pop up now. Got volts there. Do we have volts over here? We do, 4.99 volts. This one's a little bit off. No, four, yeah, five volts exactly. All right, that's good. Okay, let's put the rest of the screws in, put it back in service. Well, that's the build done, or the repair done. We're gonna put this back on the bed head. We're not gonna show you that area, obviously. And, um, yeah, my overhead light switch still works. So, quickie little one, but I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Especially if it's more interesting than this one. See you later, guys.